Well, good morning, Facebook people. Whether you're watching this on Facebook, YouTube, uh, Instagram, Twitter, or any other of the social medias I use, good morning. And uh, what a gorgeous morning. So um, here we are at the start of the desert, and uh, I'm going to do 15 today. Today it might be a bit, little different for me. I'm going to try for two kilometers in bare feet on sand just to um, condition my feet. Uh, so uh, let's crack on and I'll get back to you a little later when I want to talk a little bit about nutrition, specifically the kind of food I will take on the marathon. So uh, food uh, I will be taking on the marathon. First of all, uh, I will say that I won't be taking a stove of any kind. It will be all cold using the cold soak method. That is freeze dried food uh, rehydrated in cold water. This suits me. I've, I've experimented extensively and um, it works for me. It's perfectly palatable, calorific, uh, energy giving and absolutely fine. And uh, I will go into a menu shortly, but um, as I said, uh, on the marathon I will be using the cold soak method for all of my food. That will be no stove, I won't be carrying any stove, anything to heat food on whatsoever. Absolutely 100% cold and rehydrated in ambient temperature water. Well, <clears throat> breakfast. Let's start with breakfast, the logical one. It's pretty easy. Uh, personally, I uh, pack. Uh, I will be packing six Ziploc bags for breakfast. In the bag will be uh, rolled oats or porridge, if you like. And added to that, I will have dried fruit in in the form of uh, raisins, sultanas. Uh, if you like sweetness, if you must have sweetness, freeze-dried strawberries are great. Now this can be eaten on the hoof, uh, dry in the form of a trail mix, uh, and you can drink water with it, or you can soak it. It uh, it soaks in about uh, 20 minutes into a porridge consistency. Um, but if you don't want to stop. If you don't want to eat before you start that day's leg, then eat it dry, uh, you know, utilizing your bottled water. Uh, and uh, it works great. I eat mine dry. Works great. So porridge, sultanas, raisins, freeze-dried fruit. Um, it's sweet, it's energy-giving, and carbohydrates at last uh, throughout the day. No protein uh, for breakfast. So that's breakfast. And... We'll move on to lunch a little later. So lunch, uh, okay. To start with, um, what you need is a screw top leak proof container, preferably plastic uh, and sturdy. And with a screw top, uh, mine is 750 milliliters, uh, which is a good size for me. And a spork to uh, eat with. Those are your only cooking food preparation utensils you will need using the cold soak method and after research um, I have found this the absolute best uh, cold soak things are of course pasta will cold soak but it'll take hours so ramen uh, a pack of ramen including the soup base is about 490 calories and uh, it's certainly good, it's easily assimilated, it's easily digested, it's not huge bulk which is going to swell on your stomach. Uh, another base of course is minute rice. Ordinary rice, forget it, it will not, it takes a long time. So minute rice will soak in cold water. And an additional thing is instant potato powder, not granules, instant potato powder. You mix it with water. Uh, it's pre-season, you know, pre-season it at home, pre-season it dry with whatever herbs, spices, salt, pepper you like. Mix it with water, it's ready to eat. And it's a great thickener if you prefer a casserole or a stew type of meal. So the process is this. Uh, ramen takes about 60 minutes to fully hydrate. 
So 60 minutes before your uh, planned eating time, uh, break up the block of ramen, put it in your sealable cup and double the volume with water. And then screw the top on, forget about it. And then when you get to the point where you want to eat, you can add whatever you want, seasonings, flavorings, soup mix. Uh, a small amount of soup mix in ramen makes it great or the seasoning pack that come with it. Now protein. Myself, uh, I have a dehydrator, so uh, I am going down the route of dehydrated or jerky. That would be beef, beef alone. Uh, you can, you can pre-season it, you can rub it with whatever spices you like, but my protein will consist of jerky. Another way, if you don't have a, a dehydrator, of course, is the pepperami type sausage. Now I live in Spain, so there's a million different flavors of chorizo which is small, easy to carry, and eat along with your noodles or mix it into your noodles, whichever. So that is lunch. Um, I often eat it on the hoof, it's quite easy. You're just holding, uh, in essence, a large yogurt pot. And you can eat it and slow down your pace a little, but not stop. And uh, that is lunch. Uh, lots of carbohydrate, lots of calories protein which you need in lunch and dinner uh, in the form of jerky, biltong, pepperami, uh, possibly dried fish, but this is a bit too fishy for me. So that is lunch explained. So calories. Uh, well, having experience of this before, mainly at the behest of the UK government when I worked for them, a regretful time, but there we are. Um, so calories um i'm an older man now when i was as i said when i was younger and and, and i was on expedition and yomping a lot i worked on 2000 calories a day uh the type of food that we could get then was not nearly as good as it is now uh so there was a lot of bulk and added to it was chocolate and and, and sugar and nonsense um and uh that was what we needed to do to get the 2,000 calories or drop a pound, two pounds, three pounds every day if you didn't eat the right amount of calories, given that you were burning 2,000 calories a day. So you can see how this adds up. Now in the desert, I reckon uh, I will burn uh, 2,000 calories, 1,800, 2,000 calories every single day. They have got to replace, be replaced and also you've got to replace the calories you just use uh, sorry there's a car going past i'll explain this in a moment so as i said you've got to uh, replace the calories not only that you expend in the effort of savage and, and monstrous trekking through the desert but also the calories that your body needs just to survive so I don't mind losing a bit of weight on, on the Marathon de Sable, but I don't want to get weak. So um, my baseline, it may be more, it may be less. I'll find out this when I do uh, my endurance training over two days instead of one like I am doing today. But at the moment, I'm working on taking in 2000 calories over three meals per day, breakfast, lunch and a larger dinner and then some sort of trail mix or biltong or jerky that I can just eat on the hoof, uh, po possibly um, uh, some kind of, uh, I, I, I do hate sugar, but it is essential. Uh, small amount of sugar and salt is essential. So, essential. so I'll be taking uh, Kendall mint cake and also isotonic tablets. Now these isotonic tablets, you can just let them dissolve in your mouth or you can put them into water and make an orangey lemony drink. So the baseline of 2000 calories to be fine tuned before the, the actual marathon. And to do this, I'll need to stay out two days. That's a full day hiking, uh, camp wilderness, just with a sleeping bag, and then another four full days hiking. and weighing at the beginning, weighing at the end, and see where we are 
if I've gained or lost any weight because we're talking about small amounts of weight remember if you do it over one day it's easily replaced if you do it over six days you don't want to be dropping 12 pounds over six days that shouldn't happen you'll be weak so at the moment the baseline for me will be 2000 calories per day uh, in a little while uh, we'll talk about dinner but first of all as you heard uh, a car went past me there today I am on tarmac and I'm power walking the entire time uh, the reason I'm on tarmac is very kindly my sponsor bought me two pairs of Brooks Ghost uh, in inverted commas professional trail hiking shoes and I've got a pair on today I didn't know whether they were going to be good or bad they are expensive uh, but still they might not be good for me they might be very good for me um, so I'm staying on tarmac uh, to break a pair in and to make a judgment at the moment I can see where the extra money goes so 500 and a bit euros for two pairs I can definitely feel where the extra money goes they are light snug touching all the right places and primarily your foot doesn't move in the shoe it's like you're not wearing a, I know this sounds ridiculous it sounds like you're not wearing a shoe um, now I've got these paired up with uh, body armor socks uh, and, and the guarantee with these uh, short sports body armor socks if they <laughs> if they develop a hole anywhere if they wear through to a hole anywhere simply return them and they give you a new pair so <laughs> let's see i'll put them to good use i'll put them good i'll put them through a good workout and if they develop the hole uh, i'll test their returns facility but at the moment uh body armor socks is what i am wearing so uh the one meal that we have left to have um, is dinner so dinner dinner for me will consist of uh a full ramen uh sorry he's another car uh i'm on a mountain road here so sorry about that uh, a full pack of ramen i forgot to mention the ramen you can actually you can break down the bulk if you just squeeze the pack and it, it, it sort of demolishes it and goes to a much smaller pack same weight of course but uh and and the ramen i'm talking about is the square blocks um they're quite inexpensive and, and uh, they're nutritious enough and you can add or take away as you wish. Uh, so dinner, it will be a full pack of ramen uh, added to uh, some instant mashed potato um, and uh, some, some jerky or built on or uh, preserved meat, preserved sausage um, and I live in Spain as you can see that you know I live in Spain and uh, this is this is the ideal environment to train in to be honest because uh, at the moment it's 37 degrees uh, and it is desert as you can see in front of you desert and mountain range much the same as the Sahara uh, there are sand dunes in the Sahara and of course uh, you know if I wanted to find the sand dunes in Spain it's easy to do in fact I'm looking at some to my right uh, so dinner a full pack of ramen added to which uh, I, uh, to which I will add some uh, mashed potato powder some protein in the form of meat uh, preserved meat or preserved sausage um, and it will make a large meal uh, that will be the the, the highest calorific meal of the day uh, at the moment I'm aiming at 2,000 calories now the timing lunch uh, on, on, on the marathon I will simply uh, in, in my plastic uh, Tupperware if you like container I'll put the ramen and some soup mix or seasoning uh, and, and double the volume with water and then put that back in my backpack an hour later I will take it out and eat it on the hoof so dinner uh, in camp at the end of each day I will uh, hydrate uh, my meal in camp and, and let it sit for an hour uh, and uh, then eat it so as not to get digestion uh, sorry indigestion um, 
So uh, I would like to think of the dinner portion of my calorie intake being about 800 calories. The other 1200 made up over the day uh, with breakfast, lunch and on the hoof snacks such as jerky, maybe nuts and raisins, trail mix, anything uh, what you can carry which isn't heavy and doesn't have big volume. Uh, peanuts and raisins, definitely not salted peanuts and raisins. Just shelled peanuts, raisins, or sultanas, and a handful of those every now and again certainly offers great sustenance and is light and easy to carry, it doesn't spoil. Uh, great. So that will be my um, eating over the six days in the Marathon de Sable. In essence, it is 18 meals six breakfasts, six lunches, and six dinners plus snacks to eat on the hoof. As I've said, my snacks consist of bilton or jerky, uh, but you could have anything, you know, anything that will not spoil, which you enjoy and is easily assimilated and won't give you gas. Not a good thing with extreme exertion, of course. Uh, and also I want to add nothing, absolutely nothing with artificial sweetener. There isn't toilets in the desert. So uh, a regretful word, uh, although it must be talked about, is your ablutions. The best thing that I can think of doing, and, and, and I've done before, is train your body to, to, to take care of ablutions and bathroom activities in the evening, instead of in the morning, in the evening. When you're relaxed and, and you're not going to get indigestion, you're not going to need a bathroom in the desert. So in the evening, do it over a couple of months that your ablutions take, uh, uh, take you to the bathroom in the evening. So enough talk about that. I know it's not a, a nice subject, but there we are. So that is my uh, plan for food on the Marathon de Sable. I will need a couple of expeditions overnight in this area here uh, to really see if or how much weight I lose over two days on 2000 calories. If I don't lose weight, then we're fine. If I lose weight, I'm going to have to up the calories in the stages of 100, for instance, 2100, 2200. These will all be carefully measured out and partitioned into 18 different meals before the marathon. So there we are. Uh, if you like uh, listening to my tips for expedition or you know upcoming marathons in the desert, uh, please subscribe to this uh, YouTube channel uh, and click the bell icon and you'll be notified each day when I uh, post a new video. Uh, tomorrow I'm going to be talking about pace and cadence and, and my tricks for getting a steady, long gated pace. It is essential. So tomorrow I'll be talking about pace, speed and cadence.